Hi, this is Paul from New York, and this is my Yoga Amazing. Welcome everyone to this edition of the Yoga Amazing Video Podcast. I am Chaz and I am your host. That's right, nobody else's host, just yours. Now let's get right on this week's email, and this one comes in from Dr. Ken. It's interesting, because I get to write Dr. Ken a prescription for yoga today. And he says, Chaz, I'm a newcomer to your podcast. I'm in my 40s. I like playing tennis. Can you design a yoga program for those weekend warriors who play racket sports like tennis and racquetball? And of course I can, and that's what I'm going to do, not only for tennis and racquetball, but for squash, and even for you golfers out there, this would be a good class for you. So I'm going to design a series of asanas, yoga poses, that are going to be beneficial for you so that you can open up your body more because a lot of times in racket sports, you're constantly going only in one direction. I mean, I know you have your, your backhand. I mean, I played racquetball, but you know, it's, it's mainly on one side, especially in golf. So um, we're, we're going to balance our body out. That's what we do in yoga. We balance our body out through the asanas. We find our focus in the meditation through the breath. And you can use the breathing aspects from this class in your sport as well. So Dr. Ken, thank you very much. Glad I could write you a prescription. If you would like me to fill your prescription, uh, please send an email to me, chaz at yogamazing.com. You can also Twitter me, twitter.com slash yogamazing. Uh, you can also um, send me more videos. I'm getting some great videos. The front end of this one, funny, good stuff. Now with all that being said, let's start today's class. And remember to breathe, relax, and yes, have fun in this edition of the Yoga Amazing video podcast. From here, open up your knees and bring it into child's pose and stretch it out. Take your forehead to the floor and start to breathe the ujjayi breath. Now as we go through today's class, you want to breathe the ujjayi breath. I always talk about this at the beginning because the breath is the life force of our class. You must understand to breathe deeply, inhaling through the nose, hollowing the throat, expanding the chest and lungs, and just allowing the body to open and find its way through the breath. Remember, as you go through this class, your poses may become hard or easy, but your breath never changes. It's a constant flow. It's like, a, like I always say, like a cascading waterfall. So for these first few moments, just allow yourself to breathe deeply, ujjayi breathing, where you inhale through the nose, hollow the throat, expand the chest and lungs, filling the body with the prana, the life force. And then as you exhale, take it back through the throat, through the nose, and then keep that cycle going, continuous and fluid, as we start the class. From here, bring yourself up, and let's take it up and back into a downward facing dog. So we want to make sure we flatten our palms, spread our fingers, deepen the breath. I would definitely say, as you know, down dog is one of my favorite poses. I would definitely give this prescription to anyone. The down dog is just a great pose to work on. I've also received emails of people saying, Chaz, my wrist hurts sometimes with with doing this. So you want to push more into your index fingers and your thumbs, but evenly distributing the weight through the palm, and this should help alleviate some issues with your wrist. And then from here, you're going to drop it down and go to child's pose, doing a few of these. Then we're going to do some upper body strengthening. So there may be a little bit of a, a little bit of a push here. But it's going to, we need to build our upper body strength and bring it up and back into down dog one more time. Again, flatten your palms, spread your fingers, roll the shoulder blades away, hide the heels behind the feet, neck is long, heels to the floor, you know, you know the story. If they don't touch the floor, that's right, I heard you. Good. And then from here, upper push up position, a plank. Now, you don't want this to happen. Don't let your shoulders drop. You want to be in a nice plank position. And if you need to here, if this to help you, drop to your knees, but still hold it, okay? So I'm going to do two options. You got this one, if it's too intense, to hold it up, because you don't want your bottom to drop in. You want a nice, strong plank. 
and then you want to go into a chaturanga or as my friends call it the chimichanga <laughs> I know it's kind of hard to hold this pose when you're laughing you're going to drop it down here now if you need to drop to your knees drop to your knees to hold it okay but keep your forearms in an upper position parallel to the floor and take it back to down dog yeah I know that's that's very intense I'm with you And again, plank here. And again, if you need to, drop to your knees and just hold it here. Don't put all the weight in the knees, into the legs, put it into the upper body. And then again, the same thing, chaturanga. Elbows in, upper arms parallel to the floor, deep in the breath. Push it back, down dog. Whew, I know, I know, Chaz, you should warn us when you're doing classes like this. <laughs> I know, I hear those in my emails. Jazz, you forget to tell us. Well, okay, I, I didn't, uh, yeah, I did forget. Okay, now from here, look between your hands, bring your right knee forward for a pigeon. Lift into the heart, lengthen, and then lay it out. Now, I was talking the other day with a friend and a lot of times if you have a blanket close by because a lot of times people's hips aren't open as open as mine and they'll start dropping to the side and you don't want to be like this at all okay you want to make sure that your body's squared up and you're evenly distributing your weight as you inhale expand exhale deepen and if you need to put a, uh, a pillow or a block or a blanket right here if you need it if you don't have any props uh, just do what you can do but remember do not lean or drop breathe and expand and release now um, I'm in a different space in my body you're in a different space in your body just go where your body's telling you you should be at this moment and from here come up hold shoulder blades down breath deep none of this shoulder blades down Notice that when you're, you're at your desk the next time, notice that throughout the day how your shoulders start creeping up like that. You, you'll notice it. You'll, you'll notice these things more and more because of yoga. And take it back to a down dog. Stay here and breathe. And left knee forward. Keep the right toes dug in the mat. Same thing, don't drop your bottom to the side. Don't lay it over. You're losing everything. Remember, no soup for you. No yoga for you. We want to make sure that we square up the body. If you need to, grab a blanket or a block. Do what you can do. Inhale, expand, exhale, deepen, and lay it out. Remember, everybody's body's in a different position. And sometimes I have to make sure that I don't go too deep because people may think that they should be going as deep as me, but that's not the case. You need to listen to your body and go where you should go and stretch it all the way out. The reason I'm up here is so that I can talk to you and my voice doesn't get muffled into the mat. But I want you to stretch it all the way out. Just breathe, relax, and just open like a flower. You know, they say that you can't force a flower to bloom because if it does, if you do try to force a flower to bloom, you're just gonna kill it. So that's the same concept here. If you try to force your yoga practice to bloom before it's ready to bloom, it's going to die, and that's where you can injure yourself, okay? Let the beauty find its way on its own. And it will bloom, and it'll be so beautiful, and you'll have the ah, the aha factor come into play. And go to down dog. And then look between your hands, walk your feet forward, standing forward fold, bend your knees slightly and just hang here, taking pressure off the neck and shoulders and just hang. This is a great pose you can do anywhere, back your 
bottom into a wall. And I always tell people this is great to do after lunch. It brings a fresh supply of blood into the head. It wakes you up. It calms you down. So it's kind of like instead of getting that uh, coffee in the afternoon, just do something like this. It's great to take with you anywhere, this pose. And then from here, bend your knees and bring it into an Utkatasana. Squeeze and lengthen through the fingers, deepen the breath. Try to sit, try to stand, get stuck in the middle. And then bring it up, over, and hang. Just a couple of these. Good for the quads, which I know you need out there on the court. Good for the lower back. So bend your knees again. Utkatasana, the fierce pose. Bring it up. Try to sit, try to stand. Get stuck in the middle. Knees, ankles, big toes touching. Deep in the breath. Up, over, and hang. Bend your knees if you need to. Hinge from the hips. Lengthen the spine and drop it in. And then slowly coming up. Hands to the chest. Good. And I'll turn and face this way. Now, we're going to do a few standing asanas here, and then we're also going to be doing some, some, some chest openers as well. So let's first work on our standing asanas. So we want to get some nice deep stretches down the side and some stretches for the quads. So from here, take your right leg out for me, so you're opposite of me, so I know do whichever way you want to go. Arms up, big inhale. And as you exhale, take it into a warrior two. Again, tuck it in, two sheets of glass. Squeeze and lengthen. Draw the navel in. Soften your gaze forward. Remember, do not lean forward. Keep your spine vertical. And then from here, take your arm to the leg and extend. So you get to stretch all the way down the side of the body. Reach and breathe, sinking it in. and bring it back to the center. Let's rotate to the other side. Again, warrior two, the other way. Arms up, inhaling, exhale. Take it into warrior two again, tuck it in, two sheets of glass. If you don't know what I mean by two sheets of glass, remember there's two planes of glass and you've got to stick your body between those two planes. So you got to tighten the body, none of the bottom and chest sticking out. You got to tuck it in, breathe, gaze forward. and then arm to leg, and then extend with that right arm as you look up under that arm to the ceiling, deep in the breath. And then from here, release. Back to the center. Walk your feet in. And from here, we're gonna be doing a Tadasana uh, we're going to interlock our fingers, Tadasana, the mountain pose, and we're going to interlock our fingers. We're going to lift into the heart. And then just see if you can pull the arms a little bit off the body. And then come forward, bend your knees, and bring the arms up and over. Releasing into downward facing dog, hands to the floor, walk it back. From here, drop to your knees, go to child's pose. Bring yourself up to a kneeling position. Hands on your hips, knees hips width apart for uh, Ustrasana, the camel pose. Now you can, there's three, two, three different ways to do this. Keep the hands on the hips, hips forward, drop the head. Dig your toes in the mat, grab your heels, or point your toes back. So pick whichever one works best for you. 
Now, I'm a little bit more open in my spine. So you, when you're doing this, you want to lift and lengthen to here, then go back. Forming the letter D, we don't want to lean back and do this and form a sliding board. That's incorrect. That's all ego coming out. Wrong, 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 wrong. Time out. Let's do it right. So from here, hands on the hips. Big inhale, lift into the heart, lengthen through the spine. Roll the shoulders, tuck the tailbone, knees and hips in alignment, and just go back. So if you want to grab your heels, that's cool. I'm just going to keep my hands on the hips but you want to lift up and lengthen and roll the heart deep in the breath. And again, you may not be going back as far as me. Don't push it. Just listen to where you should go. Coming up, release, child's pose. Stretch out your back. Bring yourself to lying on your stomach for a bow. So, chin to the floor, you're gonna bend your knees, grab your feet, big inhale. And as you exhale, kick your legs back, bring it up. And again, you may not be as deep as me on this. I know I've had people say that, make sure that you don't you know, over push people. Well, that's what I'm always saying is, deepen your breath, only go where you need to. You may only be here. You may be here and just doing this. This is an option right here. So just listen to your body. Release. Child's pose, stretch out your back again. Bring yourself up and you're gonna sit on your bottom. You're gonna crisscross your legs and bring it into a butterfly. I'll turn and face towards you. You wanna make sure that you take your hands around your feet. You want to peel your feet apart. You want to lengthen your knees and drop your knees deep in the breath. So you want to squeeze your bottom into the mat like you're trying to squeeze, squeeze it. Mula Bandha. So squeeze, draw the navel in right here. Let's lock here. Breathe and then pull yourself forward slightly, but lengthen knees, drop your knees. Peel your feet apart like you're opening up a book deep in the breath. Slowly release, let's crisscross your legs. <clears throat> Big inhale, lengthen. Exhale, deepen into the twist. And bring it back to the center, crisscross your legs the other way. Inhale, lengthen, twist. And from here, let's take our legs straight on the mat. We're gonna do a plank, full plank on this one. And you're gonna take your feet, point your feet. I want you to do this. It's a little bit more challenging, I know, but I want you to do it. So from here, fingers should be facing back towards you, not away from you. And you're gonna big inhale, lift your hips, flatten your feet, drop your head. Now, if you can't do this variation, you can walk your feet in and form like a tabletop. If you can do the full version, do it this way and relax the head back, deep in the breath. and release your bottom, good, lay on your back. I always like giving you variations, so when you see me do these, just pick the one that works best for you. All right, lay on the back. From here, let's do the bridge, Satubhanda Sarvangasana. From here, hands to the side, inhaling the hips up. And from here, interlocking your fingers, tuck your tailbone deep in the breath. Hang out. Make sure that your knees are forward, your legs don't splay. Squeeze and lengthen the tailbone forward. Breathe. And slowly release. Bring it down vertebrae by vertebrae. Recline butterfly. And bring your legs together, squeeze your legs in, big hug, rock and roll side to side. And from here, arms to a T, legs to the right, look to the left. And roll to the left, look to the right.
And back to the center, squeeze your legs in, big hug. And from here, stretch it out on the floor for Shavasana, the resting pose, and relax. So for these next few minutes, just allow your body to just absorb what you've given it today. It's like we prescribed our body a yoga class. Now, with like any prescription, I don't claim to be a doctor and I don't play one on TV. <laughs> But I do in a podcast. So with this yoga prescription, let's just let it absorb into our body. Let it heal us from the inside out and allow the changes to be made. Because every body has a different body and every change will be different and unique with each individual. So for these next few minutes, just let it absorb. Let it melt into your body and just enjoy what you've given yourself. Health and happiness. Take the peace and the strength and share it. Namaste.